Page 102, La Cucaracha. It's a nice little arrangement. On the previous pages, they're introducing you to a few things. Let's talk about them. On page 99, they introduce you to this key of B flat major. B flat major has two flats, a B flat and an E flat. So this would be a good time to go do my scale video on B flat major. If you can get that, it's a little tricky. B flat major is a little tricky. But if you can get that okay, then go ahead and do the scale on G minor, which is the relative minor. It has two flats in it also. And it's a little easier to play than B flat major, but make sure you do the scale on B flat major. They give you the fingering to it at the bottom of page 99, but I still prefer to approach it the way I do in my videos. So I prefer you use that rather than the music in the book. Then you're going to need to know the primary chords. On page 100, it's the primary chords for B flat. The one chord, I'm going to come up here. It doesn't matter where you play. I'm going to come up here. And the four chord, remember the B flat and E flat? And then the five seven chord. It really helps if you can learn the chords, especially if you're going to improvise. Whether you're using block chords or broken chords or whatever, and the technique wise, as far as that goes, I explain that in the scale video. I prefer you do the technique I teach you there. The reading part, they you can do that on your own. If you have any questions on the reading, let me know. I know it's got dotted rhythms in it. One e and a two e and a in the bridal chorus. One e and a two e and a three. I mean, it has a title I could probably covered in, in a video, but I'm going to go ahead and skip it and let you do it. It's two lines along this. As long as you can get that rhythm. One E and a, two E and a, one E, that, you'll be okay. And then at the bottom of the page, they got six eight time, where an eighth note gets a count. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whatever, to, hopefully you can do that okay. You don't have to go too fast on that. And that brings us to La Cucaracha. And this has some tricky spots in it. So let's look at it. We already know it's in the key of B flat major. It's got two flats. It's got some pickup notes, one and a half counts. So it's three and. Three and four and. So the rhythm, watch carefully. I'm going to take out the tie. You see the two little, the D's are tied together. I'm going to take out, the, I'm going to play all the notes. Starting with the first full measure, it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So then I can put the tie back in. I just think playing the note. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and you have to come down here. One and two and Rhythm-wise, that's it. The notes are a little different as you go through here, but the rhythm has got to be those two things that we did there. Th second line, second measure, you're here. And then you got to come up. you got a half a beat rest. Come up here. One and two and... Don't forget the E flats. And then fourth finger on that. You have to be able to do this. I'm sorry, but you got to be able to just relax the thumb and come over. You can't... Don't switch out a lot. You can do it a little bit if you need to, but don't come along. Try and just relax the thumb and come over. Here. And that puts you back in position to what we were doing before. Now at the end, last two measures. One and two. They have fourth finger. You don't have to use fourth finger there because it's the end of the piece. What's the difference? Just come out. Second finger's fine. Any finger, third finger, whatever you want, doesn't matter. You, my point is, we don't need fourth finger here. I mean, when we did it before, we had an F coming up, so we're in position for it. But this, we got nothing coming up, we're done. Left hand, broken chords, primary chords, one and two and one and two. End of the line, five seven chord. chord to five seven chord. Well that's fine because we got plenty to think about in the right hand. And this is where it gets tricky in putting the hands together because they're not playing together. So the first pickup beat's not fine, the left hand's not playing. And then you're playing here together and then you're going to play the D and then you're going to play the chord in the left hand 
as you hold the D down, and then you're going to play the S. So they're not playing together. So it's one and two and three. That's on three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two. rhythm very carefully. Once you get it, it's pretty repetitious. You can get it there. But I like to play different fingers on repeated notes, and I keep doing a one, two, one on a lot of these. At the beginning. It's like in the third measure, the, uh, the last two measures of the first line here, I would do a, a three, three, and then a two, Three, two. So I just, just so I don't have to play, so I don't have to play repeated notes. And a lot of these, I do it on two on. This is a fairly quick little piece. point is I'm just trying to use different fingers on these repeated notes because it's safer once you get the hang of it but you have to force yourself to do it at first so you will get the hang of it and that's why I'm encouraging you take it slow Tempo-wise, it's quick. Dynamic-wise, it, it's it's a happy piece. So just play it on the happy side. Uh, it's, it says forte for loud. It's up to you. You can don't play it all the same. Just you can get a little louder and softer occasionally. Dynamic or uh, articulation. Excuse me. The only you can follow their slurs in the right hand. I mean the eighth notes you almost have. To, just do the best you can with them because when you play repeated notes on a piano, you can't play them legato. They're going to be separated. So I wouldn't worry about that so much, but on the slurred notes, like in the third major and second line, go ahead and connect all that together. I mean, that's fine. But articulation wise, try to do what you can. In the left hand, there's no articulation. I mean, you can, you can separate these if you want tend to play them legato because what we're going to do with the pedal is going to make it sound like. So for the most part I'd play the probably the left hand all legato. Uh, we're just providing harmonic support here. The, uh, all the good stuff's in the right hand is what we want to hear. As far as the pedal goes, we're just pedaling the first two beats. And then after you play the notes in the third beat, lift up. Don't pedal anymore. So at the beginning, Push the nose down first and then the pedal. And right after I play that, I'm going to lift up, lift the pedal up, right after I play the half note in the left hand. Right, so throughout the whole piece until the end, the last measure you don't pedal. You have to take it really, really super slow at first, and then you can gradually speed it up over time. I like to play it with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms just to make sure because these rhythms are a little tricky. So I'll give us what three counts or so and then you come in on the end of three. One and two and three and something like that. One and ready and go. One and 
Two.